Cars final render decided to throw all the reserves of food into the ocean to not pay 4% tax on everything. There was no food for the new master distiller and final render sent him to his death with an empty stomach but a heart full of love which he betrayed. Shame on you final render. Shame on you. How's it going guys? It's the final render here and welcome to Sid Meier's Colonization. This is a game which is very very old to say the least. I believe this game came out in 1994. However, it is a game that I truly love. I first saw the guys on the Civilization channel from Yorks Cast playing this quite a while ago. And I'm actually going to play some of this game. I've probably got maybe 90 hours in this game, so I've played a lot of it to say the least. And it is absolutely great fun about starting your colony in the new world, in America. And then maybe one day trying to go independent from whatever country you started in. So it's all about building the new world. Okay, so very old game as you can tell graphics wise. You do kind of have to put up with the graphics for it. We are going to start in a new world. And difficulty wise, this is a very hard game. Very hard game indeed. I've been it once on the hardest difficulty, once on the easiest. So therefore, I'm going to go for the medium difficulty. And the hardest difficulty was... Oh boy, that was tough. Alright, so we are now going to pick what country we want to play. Each one has a different power. Okay, so England, we get more immigrants. So they were kind of on point right there. We've also got France, and they want to get cooperation with the natives. Spain, who want to kill all the natives. And the Netherlands, who like trade. Who like to actually trade with the foreign powers when they get their ability. And purely make money. Now, the best way I've actually found, which is the way the Yogscast played it as well, is to play as the Netherlands, because you get a better ship to start with. Okay, so we are going to be called Final Render. Conquistador Final Render. That is me. Alright, so the Netherlands. The Protestant Dutch provinces gained their independence from Catholic Spain during the Age of Expansion, a maritime country of fishermen and merchants. The Dutch Netherlands operated large merchants of fishing fleets in the North Sea and the Baltic. Upon achieving political independence in the early 17th century, this tiny nation found itself ideally poised to expand its overseas trade into lucrative and new markets in the Far East and the New World. Unlike their rivals, and sometimes enemies, the Spanish, French and English, the Dutch were ruled by the merchant class. This unique arrangement led them to focus all aspects of state, diplomatic, military and economic policy around the interests of trade. Their strategy proved quite successful, and the Dutch economy and merchant fleet expanded so rapidly that the European powers felt compelled to take drastic measures against the Dutch in order to prop up their own less successful enterprises. Okay, so there is a little bit of history on the Dutch in the New World, and to represent the strength of the Dutch economy as well as the Dutch achievements in shipping, commerce and banking, the Dutch player receives a bonus when trading with Amsterdam, because we will be going back and forth between Europe and the New World to sell stuff, Commodity prices in Amsterdam do not collapse as quickly as with other European powers and they recover more quickly. In other words, if we sell lots of stuff, the price will stay higher longer than with the other European powers. So, let's go! Alright, so this is the king. This is the king of the Netherlands. The year of our lord is 1492, an audience with the Stadtholder. For the greater glory of the Netherlands, we dub thee Viceroy of the New World. Go and explore this new land, settle it and bring wealth and glory to yourself and our nation. And this is where the truly beautiful music kicks in. It's uh, mostly based on MIDI files, I'm sure, but it sounds absolutely fantastic. In the year of our Lord, 1492, an expedition led by the great conquistador, Final Render. That's me, left Amsterdam on a voyage of discovery. Commissioned and blessed by the Stadtholder of the Netherlands to explore the ocean sea, to find uncharted lands, to establish colonies for the greater glory of the Netherlands. A ship loaded with pioneers and soldiers set sail to find a new life, a new beginning, a new world. Whew, pretty exciting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree, even if it does take a long time to scroll through all the text. Okay guys, so we're in the game. Right, this is our little boat right here, our merchant ship, which is a better ship than the other European powers get to start off with. And we are on the very edge of the new world. So let's go ahead and find the new world. Oh, discovery of the new world. That was easy. What do we call this new land? Let's call it Renderville. That is the name of the new world. Okay, so as we can see here, we've got the land. And right there, right above us, is a native encampment. So it's probably not a good idea to settle our first little colony right here, seeing as the natives are right there. 
And right there we have got the native capital, so we definitely don't want to settle right next door to them. You know, that might anger them quite a bit. More native sentries over there. And really, we want to find places which have got lots of sources of good stuff on the land. Ah, here we go. This would be a very good spot right there. Just underneath the ship, we've got some fish. Doesn't really look like a fish, I know, but I'm sure you it is. We've got a mountain so we can get ore. And we have also got some sugar cane right there, so we could probably make rum. Shall we make landfall, Your Excellency, and leave the ships behind? Make landfall. Oh, we've also got some minerals there. That is fantastic as well. Okay, so our, our soldier and our pioneer have set sail. And now we're going to get our ship to just kind of explore the land a little bit. Oh, there is a native encampment right there. But we've got some really good stuff here. I'm going to settle here anyway. Okay, so let's select our pioneer and with the B button, build our first colony. What is our first colony going to be called? New Amsterdam, because I accidentally hit enter. Whoops, okay, so we actually can rename it. We're not going to call it New Amsterdam. Let's call it... Hmm, we need a cool name. How about we call it... Render Town. That is the name of our capital. Right there, Render Town. Okay, so this is what our first colony, as you can see, and we've got several buildings in there to start making stuff. But our first priority, primarily, is we want to build a dock. So why don't we go ahead and build a dock? We need to go ahead and get lumber. So let's tell our free colonist here, who was the pioneer, to go ahead and become a lumberjack. So he will start chopping wood down at the nearby forest so we can build a dock. Once we've got our dock, we can actually start to fish that fish and get food because we actually do need to manage how much food we get and how much production we get. And of course we do have our soldier still, seeing as he's got pretty much nothing to do, seeing as we don't have enough food to feed him, he is going to fortify the town. So if we get attacked, he is ready with his muskets, with his brown bess right there. Okay, and here we go, now we can pick our first member of Congress. And when we get our first member of Congress, we get special abilities. If you ever played Civilization, it's like, it's kind of like collecting a kind of culture bonus, so to speak. So we can recruit Peter Stuzavand, who is a trade advisor. And that allows the construction of the Customs House. We don't need that right now, I'll explain that later. Henry Hudson, he actually increases the output of our fur trappers by 100%. We don't have any fur trappers right now. Hernan Cortez. When Cortez joins the colony, a conquered native settlement always yields treasure in greater abundance, and the king's galleons transport treasure free of charge. That would be a good one to have, but let's see who else we've got. Benjamin Franklin, of course, we've all heard of him. The king's European wars no longer have further effect relations between powers in the new world. In other words, if the Netherlands is declared war on by France, then France would also declare war on us on the new world, and we don't really want that. And we've got William Brewster. No more criminals or servants appear on the dock. Okay, I'm actually going to get him to start off with. You, this will make more sense later on as time goes on, I assure you. Ah, religious unrest in the Netherlands causes increased immigration. Colonists, master blacksmiths, are now available in Amsterdam. The religious unrest in the Netherlands has made someone want to come to the New World. In other words, he is Protestant and he wants to not be part of the Catholic culture. He wants to be part of the Protestant culture, which is here in the New World. So we're going to tell our ship to go back to the Netherlands and go pick him up, because he'll be very useful to have a master blacksmith. Oh, the natives have found us. Meeting the natives. The Tupi tribe welcomes you. We are a glorious nation of 23 camps. Wow, that's a lot of natives. To celebrate our friendship, we generously offer you the land you now occupy as a gift. Will you accept our treaty and live with us in peace, brothers? Yes, let's live with the natives so we can trade with the natives and convert them to our religion. The Tupi welcome peace with our brothers, the Dutch. Let's smoke a peace pipe to celebrate our perpetual friendship. We hope you soon visit the Tupi village to share knowledge with us and that you send your wagon trains to trade with us. So that's another reason why it's good to leave the natives alone and not try to kill them all, is that you can trade with the natives. Okay, so the boat is starting to do some more exploring on his way to automatically go ahead and get the blacksmith. And I wonder now, Oh, the Tupi have given us gifts. The Tupi tribe is pleased to see the progress of our neighbours at Rendertown. We have come to offer you 12 furs in recognition of everlasting peace between our peoples. Well, at least they're not trying to kill us. That's definitely a good sign because it is very possible to just get massacred by the natives pretty much as soon as you land if you start to annoy them too much. Okay, the ship is now back in Europe. There is our master blacksmith waiting on the dock. We can currently transport four things at once. The other colonies can only do two at a time with their starting ships. So... Let's bring him back. We don't have any gold to buy anything. So let's go ahead and bring him back to Render Town. It's going to take months, maybe even years to get back to Render Town. But it's all worth it in the end, I am sure. Okay, so the ship has now made it back to the New World. Let's go ahead and tell him to come back to Render Town. So he's going to follow the same set path to come back to Render Town. 
Okay, religious unrest has now also made a master carpenter arrive in Amsterdam. That is actually really quite good indeed. We're getting a lot of good immigrants coming in. Okay, so now our blacksmith is in the town. Just because he's a blacksmith doesn't mean he only has to do blacksmith stuff. He can also be a farmer, a sugar planter, a tobacco planter, and these are all resources you can gather to sell back to the European powers to make your own things, like make your own artillery, make your own ships, make your own guns, or you can actually convert them into bigger things. But we're going to make him be a farmer right now. He is going to go ahead and get four food from that tile right there. It's all tile-based, similar to civilization. And as you can see, we are getting six food per turn here. We get four food there, that's how much we need to keep our two people in town alive. And two extra, which goes into the reserves. So, let's go ahead and carry on until we have got enough lumber for the dock. Oh wait, actually, have we got enough already now, actually? The docks actually requires 52 lumber, and we have got 52 lumber now. So we're gonna tell our other free colonist to become a carpenter. They don't mind changing jobs, they can totally do that. So now he will actually get three hammers per turn. And the docks requires 52 hammers, so it'll take a few turns before the docks is finished. But when, when it's done, we can get a huge amount of fish from there and it'll be very, very good for our colony indeed. And also, since the natives have been giving us stuff, we can actually sell some stuff back in Europe. They've given us 59 fur pelts, which is pretty darn good. They also gave us 7 coats and 15 sugar. So we can go ahead and sell that back to the people in the Netherlands and then we can get some money to start buying our own people that we need and actually pay them to come and live with us, which is pretty darn epic. Cargo from the new world! Okay, we can start selling some stuff. Okay, so the fur is currently selling for 5 gold each and we have, what, 52, something like that? So we got 295 gold for that and the coats sell for 12. So if we could actually turn that fur into coats ourselves, we could make more money and the sugar only sells for 4, that's a shame. But we're now we actually have some gold, we can buy some stuff, we can recruit some people. We can get some veteran soldiers. Now, these three which we get here, they're, they're the cheap ones. And you can actually train veteran soldiers, but it costs 2,000 gold. But since there happens to be a veteran soldier who is looking to go to the new world, we can get him already. So we have just saved maybe like 1,800 gold right there, which is pretty darn good buy. And we still have some more money left over. Let's go ahead and get another free colonist. And uh, I'm also going to buy some horses. I'm going to buy... I'm going to buy four horses. Whilst I did just tell our free colonists to start building the dock, I'm actually going to pull him out of the town for now. I'm actually going to get him to do something else. Make him a colonist. And then in the next turn, I will tell him to go and visit the natives. And if you're on good terms with the natives, which we are, they can actually train some of your immigrants to be better things. So let's go ahead and see what this town can turn this colonist into. Entering the Indian village. Your expedition arrived at the camp of Tupi. The inhabitants are peacefully working around the surrounding fields and they wave to you happily. Let's live among the natives. You are unskilled, young one, and your ways are strange. If you wish, however, we the Tupi will show you how to become a master sugar planter. Yes, I will become a master sugar planter instantly. Okay, so they've just trained our dude how to be a master sugar planter. And right where he is standing right now, there is some land which is perfect for sugar growing, which is absolutely brilliant. So now we have got a colonist who is really good at growing sugar, and we've got land which is really good for growing sugar. And the sugar we can sell by itself, or we can turn it into rum, which we can sell back at higher cost. Okay, and the ship has arrived back near Render Town, so let's get them to head straight back to Render Town. And now, well, let's go ahead and get this guy on the sugar planting. Okay, so we've got to actually move our farmer for now. And let's get him planting some sugar. We've got 12 sugar per turn by doing this. That's a huge amount of sugar right there. Okay, but we do have to worry about our food tiles. He's getting three food there rather than two right there. So that's probably a good idea. But we do really need to get this docks online pretty much. But we do have a master carpenter waiting to come into town. So that'll speed it up dramatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our master carpenter a carpenter. He's getting six hammers per turn. And the original guy, just the regular person, he was only getting three. So our master carpenter is going to get the docks done much, much quicker. Uh, we we'll go ahead and put our horses down there. Horses actually do breed over time, so I bought four. And then eventually they'll turn into 50, which is what you need to actually use them. So to speak, you need 50 of them. That's a very small gene pool for horses, I'm sure you'll agree. But hey, never mind. And we do need some more food. So, mm. Okay, this is a problem actually. As you can see, we have got an X on our food, which means we are not growing enough food currently. So, since he is actually getting sugar, it would actually be better if he got food first. 
So now they're all in the green. We're not going to die of starvation now, which is fantastic. And uh, we're now going to get this extra free guy to start ringing Liberty Bells. And what that means is the more Liberty Bells you actually start to ring, the more free your colony will be. And that's actually where you need to get those bonus people which we selected earlier. The more bells you have, the quicker you get the bonus people. And we do have some more stuff we can sell. We can go ahead and sell the sugar back to the Netherlands and we've also got some more furs. It's not much, granted we'll get less money for this than we will the other ones, but the boat isn't doing anything else right now. So why don't we go ahead and send the boat back to the Netherlands to go and sell that. Oh, they've actually given us eight more furs. Okay, so we'll load those extra eight furs onto the boat, which is fantastic. There we go. Okay, and let's send the boat back to the Netherlands. Go get me some money, fool. Okay, we obviously did get an extra soldier as well, a better soldier. We got a regular soldier selected here, but we did buy a veteran soldier who is better. So why don't we go ahead and actually start to explore the land a bit with our soldier. And uh, as you can see, we've moved our soldier right next to the native village. And a green arrow has appeared, which means they're alarmed. So we need to move our soldier pretty quickly away from there. Yep, okay, so the Spanish caravel has been damaged. Okay, so the natives are actually attacking the Spanish, which is pretty darn good. The other European powers are here. We've got to keep that in mind. Ships back. Right, let's sell the sugar. We've got 160 for that sugar and the furs. We've got 120. So can we buy anything else? Uh, we can buy another master carpenter. Ooh, we can get a master distiller. Master distillers turn sugar into rum very quickly. And we've got pretty darn good sources of sugar. So again, the master distiller would be brilliant because we can actually make a lot of money by selling rum, which is brilliant. Anyone else we can get? Oh, we don't have any more money. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring our master distiller back to Rendertown. Dutch founding fathers announced William Brewster has joined the Continental Congress. There he is. That's William Brewster right there. So this is the guy who is going to make it so that no more criminals or indulgent servants appear at the dock. And you know how we were able to recruit people? You can actually get criminals or servants appear, and they're pretty worthless. But with this guy, we won't get them anymore. So that's a pretty big part of the game, which we don't actually need to bother with anymore now, which is actually quite nice. All right, let's pick our next one. Uh, Peter Minuit, he would be a good one. Once he joins for Congress, the Indians no longer demand payment for their land. We actually are right next to the Indian encampment, and we will have to pay them if we want to use one of our tiles, so he would be a good one. We've got Francisco de Coronando. When he joins the colonists, all existing colonies around the area become visible on the map. So we will see where all the other European powers are. That would be good. Paul Revere. When a colony is attacked and there are no more soldiers left, a colonist will automatically take any stockpiled muskets and defend the colony. That would be great. Pocahontas. When Pocahontas joins a colony, all tension levels between the natives is reduced and Indian alarm is generated half as fast. That would be good to help keep the natives on our side. And William Penn. Cross-production in all colonies increased by 50. Um, it's quite a hard one. Um, I think I'm going to go for... Hmm. I'm going to go for Pocahontas. Because we've actually been quite lucky that the natives aren't attacking us. So if we can keep it that way when Pocahontas joins, then that'll be pretty darn epic. Right, in our town here, we've got this one tile here which has got the kind of red totem on it. That means the natives want to be paid for this land. They want 260 gold for us to have that. I don't currently have 260, so never mind. But once we go ahead and load up these furs and these coats, we should have enough then, I think. But let's carry on exploring with our soldier. Master Distiller, you can go ahead. Uh, you can go ahead and get some food right now. Go ahead and do some more food so we actually get an extra bit of production right there on the food. Render Town Colony produces the docks. Brilliant, there's our dockyard right there. So now we can actually go ahead and start getting fish from this ocean tile. So now let's use the blacksmith for now. He's currently farming and he gets three food per turn. But if we make him a fisherman, he gets seven per turn. That is fantastic. So if we can get an expert or a master fisherman, then we'll probably get like maybe 18 fish out of that one tile. We won't have to worry about food for ages, which is brilliant. In fact, we don't have to worry about food so much now. We can get this guy on sugar. He's now making sugar, and we can go ahead and get him being a distiller. We are losing one food per turn, but we've got 21 in reserve, so we can actually work with this for a little bit. And that's fantastic. We are now making rum. Woohoo! But why is the rum gone? All right, now we've built our docks, we need to pick a new building to build. Okay, so there's a few things we can pick. I am thinking it's probably going to be a good idea to get... The stockade now. It's either stockade or lumber mill. I'm going to go ahead and make our carpenter a lumberjack so we can go ahead and get some more wood. 
And then once he's got enough wood, we'll start making a stockade. So if we get attacked, we will have much higher defense in this town, which is what we need in the early game. Right, let's get the ship to fortify there so that we can actually wait till we've got a large amount of rum to ship back to Europe. Spies have reported that the Iroquois raiding party wreaks havoc in the Spanish colony. Okay, so the Iroquois, or the Iroquois, are really attacking the Spanish pretty hard, which is fine by me. The Spanish are our enemies here. Ah, and here is the Iroquois. That's quite bad, actually. That means the Spanish are very nearby, you know, the ones who love killing everything. They, they're nearby, so that's a problem. Okay, will we live peacefully with the Iroquois? Yes, we will. Ah, here we go. Conquistador final render. We are concerned that the crown is not receiving its due share of new world revenue. We have therefore decided to impose a new navigation act, raising your tax rate by 4%. Your tax rate is now 4%. Should you wish to carry on, you may kiss the pinky ring. Okay, so what they're doing right now is that they want to increase our tax by 4%. Right now, we're not paying any tax on anything we sell. And they want to tax the food. And we can kiss his pinky ring and pay 4% on everything we sell. Or we can hold the Render Town Food Party, kind of like the Boston Tea Party, and throw all of our food into the sea. And also, we will never be able to buy food in Amsterdam again. 4% actually is quite a lot. So I'm actually going to hold the Render Town Food Party. We're going to throw our reserve food into the sea. We ain't paying 4% tax on everything we sell. But now, of course, we have no food left over. Because Final Render decided to throw all the reserves of food into the ocean to not pay 4% tax on everything, there was no food for the new master distiller. And Final Render sent him to his death with an empty stomach, but a heart full of love, which he betrayed. Shame on you, Final Render. Shame on you. Ah, we can pick a new person to recruit. Uh, Master Carpenter would be good, but we've already got one of those. Three colonists would also be good, just so we have anyone. But the expert silver miner. We don't actually have any silver in our town right now, but if we can make our next settlement near a silver mine, we could probably get like 19 gold per bit of silver we sell. So if we sell 100, we'll get like 1900 gold, which would be brilliant. All right, so let's sell our stuff. Let's sell our furs. We got 110 for those. Sell the coats. We got 84 for those and sell the rum. The rum we got 288 for and we didn't have much. So if we can keep making rum, then we'll make a lot of money. Okay, there's our silver miner right there. Who else should we recruit? Uh, hmm. We can buy some artillery for 500. That would be good. But really, I think it would be an idea to save for the expert fisherman. We need 1,000 gold to get the expert fisherman. But once we get him, we will get so much food off our one fish tile. It will be fantastic. Ooh, because we have some minerals right there, we can actually get our silver miner to start mining two silver per turn. And as I said, silver is worth about 19 per turn. So if we can get as much silver out of these minerals right here, then we can make a killing off of that. Ah, right here. Our soldier has discovered a little burial ground. And you can actually explore these burial grounds and get special bonuses, but... There are some bad things as well. Your person could die and get lost in the ruins, or you might annoy the natives. And the natives are actually on our side right now. But we do have Pocahontas currently being recruited. Yeah, let's explore it. Explore it. Please don't die. In the ruins, we found lost civilization within a golden artifacts worth 170. Not bad, not bad. Could have been better, but that's not bad, actually. 170 gold. We've got another immigrant coming in. Um, let's go ahead and get a free cotton... Let's get a Master Carpenter, actually. He's free, after all. And our soldier has discovered a little spot which has some silver on it. So, it might be an idea to actually whack a colony down here. Let's explore the little area around there to start off with. See if there's actually anything else around there we can use, like a source of food or something like that. Uh, it's just mountains by the look of it, so it's not great. But it means we can get lots of ore, so we could turn that town into, like, silver and ore town, so to speak, so that we could actually get lots of ore from there. But it would mean building a road all the way back to Renderville. Hmm. Let me think. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to put anyone on silver there, because it will take a lot of time to actually get that silver out of it. And by the time we actually do it, it's not really worth it. It's not really worth the hassle. We need colonies that can be self-sustaining to start off with. Because right now, this soldier I've got looking for a new spot to make our second colony. Because right now, we've only got one. Conquistador Final Render. Because of our recent developments in our ongoing war with Russia, we have decided to raise your tax by 2%. Ugh. 
God darn it. And they want to tax us on the furs. So we can either get rid of all of our furs and never be able to sell fur again. Or pay 2% on everything we sell. We do sell quite a bit of fur back to the Netherlands. So let's kiss this pinky ring. We agree to pay 2% tax on everything we sell. Okay, we've actually managed to fully stockpile on lumber. We've got plenty of lumber now to go ahead and build our stockade. So why don't we go ahead and make our carpenter be a carpenter? And now he will start producing our stockade. He gets 6 per turn and it's 64 for the stockade. It'll take 11 turns to get our stockade. Render Town produces its stockade! Boom! Look at those big walls right there. Fantastic news. Okay, so now we've got a huge amount of defense coming. And now we can upgrade our stockade to a fort if we want to, but that takes a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm thinking we're going to make our lumber mill. So he actually must start making buildings much, much quicker. I think that would be ideal. We will need some more lumber though, so make him be a lumberjack for a bit. And then go ahead and make him start building our lumber mill as well. Alright, we've got Pocahontas. Brilliant. Okay, so now the natives will be much happier with us, which is fantastic. And the natives, in theory, should stay happy with us for much longer periods of time, which is brilliant. Still got this soldier here currently looking for a new spot to set up shop for our second colony, which is proving very, very slow indeed. But hey, who do we want next? For our next one, I'm going to go with C. de la Salel. And that means whenever our colonies reach three population, they automatically get a stockade. We just spent like 11 turns waiting to get a stockade. So if we can actually do that just by getting three people in the colony, that's fantastic. It means our second colony will have a bit of a head start, so to speak. And the second colony, I'm still looking for a decent spot for, really. I need to find a spot which has a good natural resource that isn't sugar. Ooh, meeting fellow Europeans. Oh no, it's for Spain. It's for Spanish. Greetings, Conquistador Final Render, and welcome to New Spain. New Spain? It's Renderville here. We have justly claimed all of the land in the name of the Pope and the Spanish Crown. We are here to convert the heathen and enrich our sovereign. Please do not interfere with this God-given mission. So they sound a bit nuts, to say the least. Okay, so right now they are asking me, do I want to share the land with the Spanish? As in, will I leave them alone? Yes, I will leave the Spanish alone. These guys are psychopaths. So let's leave them alone. And they want to tax us on the fur again. Now it's 4% tax and everything. Yes, we sell a lot of fur, I know. Okay, I need to basically get away from the Spanish right now. They're not too happy about me being around here. However, we do know that the natives are attacking the Spanish, so they might protect us a little bit. They're killing the natives. Oh, and the mine is depleted of silver near Render Town. God darn it. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, let's pay for that hill there so we can go ahead and get some more ore from it. Let's go ahead and get four ore from that so we can make tools. And uh, everything's going good so far. Apart from our soldier is now on the run from the Spanish who are massacring all the natives. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I don't think I'll do a full Let's Play of this game, if I'm completely honest, because it's a very long game. But if you enjoyed it, then please leave it a like and a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. Please say hello to all the people who donated to the Patreon down below. And I'll see you around. This has been the final render, and you have been the audience. Until next time, farewell. Let's see if our soldier can escape the Spanish in the next turn. Guys, it's a final render here. I've been playing a lot of Counter-Strike recently. I've been playing Counter-Strike for about six or seven months because I was deranked to the Silver Leagues, the Dirty Silver Leagues. And that happened because during the big derank fest, I was a Nova 3. This happened about six or seven months ago. And then I started to get lower and lower in rank. And